We're back again here in our UK uh, South Farm Research Farm uh, lettuce trial. And uh, this trial is focused on lettuce drop. So we're looking at different management um, management possibilities for lettuce drop. So a little bit about lettuce drop while we're here. Um, lettuce drop is caused by a fungus called Sclerotinia sclerotiorum. And Sclerotinia is a soil-borne pathogen, meaning it lives almost its entire life cycle in the soil. So once Sclerotinia establishes in soil, it's extremely hard to manage. So um, Sclerotinia is unique in that it likes cool temperatures. And by cool temperatures, 55 to 65 degrees soil temperature. Temperature. So as you can guess, this is an early spring disease and lettuce, of course, is a cool season crop. So you would you would uh, absolutely expect that lettuce drop would be a pretty common disease if, if sclerotinia is indeed established in the soil. Now here in this high tunnel, uh, we knew that sclerotinia was actually established in this in this tunnel, which is why we uh, decided to work on this trial. So um, other videos have described this this trial um, in more detail, but there are multiple varieties here and there are actually multiple plots. And um, it is now almost mid-May, so most of the lettuce has been harvested. We had different planting dates here, so that's why there are a lot of empty areas. Our goal though was to look at some management options for sclerotinia. So that's why we put in different water treatments, different cultivars and different planting dates. So a little sneak peek on our data is our very early planting date. So our first planting date was in late February. We, uh, the soil was cool, the, it, the atmosphere was cool. And indeed we did not have an issue with the lettuce drop. We had a few incidents, um, but we didn't have major lettuce drop um, problems and here in our later planting date we see a lot of lettuce drop so we'll zoom in on that but another thing about sclerotinia is that it develops a survival structure called sclerotia and those sclerotia are very hard and they're black we'll do we'll give you a zoom in on those but sclerotia can survive five to seven years in the soil once they're there so um, so again, it's very important that we understand the life cycle and the biology of some of these fungi so that we can better manage disease. So as temperatures have warmed up in this trial, again, it is May, um, the soil has warmed up to that 60 or 65 degrees Fahrenheit and the sclerotinia or the, the fungus has become active. And in this plot, um, this is a susceptible variety. You'll see that there are three lettuces that are in good shape. There were 10 of this, this individual in this section here. Um, so three are healthy. Uh, we have two that are in really bad shape and the others have already been removed because they have, uh, they have been infected. And we took those back to the lab for examination. So we, we call this disease lettuce drop because within just a couple of days, the a lettuce can go from looking really good to looking really bad and this is an example of a drop you'll see it's wilted and um, very very limp um, and as I peel back there is um, there is white fluffy mycelia so mycelia is the fungal body of the fungus and then there are these black sclerotia and these are the overwintering structures so there are lots of these sclerotia here and so um, basically the life cycle of um, lettuce drop is infection of the crown and then the rotting of the crown. And because that crown is rotten, uh, water and nutrients can't make it up to the top of the, um, of the lettuce plant. So then the fungus will start actually crawling into the center into the crown of this lettuce. So lettuce drop happens really quickly and it can take out large amounts of, of the plant. Um, what we've learned from this experiment is that um, early planting may indeed be the key so that lettuce is actually harvested before um, the sclerotinia becomes active at that 55 to 65 degree soil temperature. 
So management of lettuce drop is a, is a two-fold approach. So as with any disease, fungicides are not curative. Once fungicides are used, they're used as preventatives or protectants. So, so prevention altogether of any disease is really important. So we know we, we must understand the biology of these fungal pathogens or, or any pathogen for that matter, and to be able to manipulate the, the uh, environmental conditions, for example, so that we can prevent disease from occurring. And again, that's what this trial is about. So here we have some of our lettuce cultivars that are that have that are, um, claimed to be resistant or tolerant of disease, and some of those look really good, and others don't look good at all. So, so resistant cultivars, especially as we establish that list for Kentucky, is going to be really important. Another thing, um, as I mentioned uh, previously, temperature is really vital for the life cycle of sclerotinia. So um, again, ideal temperature is 55 to 65 degrees degrees Fahrenheit. So our earlier planting had much less disease than it does now. But you will also expect that following this planting of lettuce, we're coming in with squash later in June, that it will be too hot for sclerotinia. So just using the information we have about optimal temperatures to avoid that sweet spot of April, May of, um, of, of optimal conditions for sclerotinia. Um, water, water availability is also really important. So um, this treatment, there is a higher water and a lower water treatment. The lower water treatment appears to have much less disease and we'll have that data later, but um, lowering the amount of disease is, will make it uh, too dry for the fungus to flourish. So that's another really important aspect of uh, managing disease. Um, and one of my favorite topics is sanitation. Um, so if you think about sanitation as keeping things clean, yes, I'm standing on soil, but sanitation means, um, means clean as in keeping pathogens out. So a sanitation program, a good sanitation program is not just to, um, put in clean plants from the very start and disease-free transplants from the beginning, but also as your plants become symptomatic to remove them immediately. So um, again, the survival structure of sclerotinia are these black uh, structures called sclerotia. And these sclerotia have a five to seven year survival in the soil. So if we allow these plants to become highly diseased and for these sclerotia to develop on those plants, those dying plants, then those sclerotia then will drop and embed themselves in the soil and they will remain in the soil for that extended amount of time. So as, as diseased plants begin to develop, to quickly remove those and get them out, not throw them in the center of the aisle, but to get them out of the high tunnel as soon as possible. And that will help assure that we're not building that amount of inoculum up from year to year, because that's typically what happens. We'll start with low levels of um, inoculum in the soil and each year we get more and more and that's simply because we're leaving these types of plants in the field for much too long and the sanitation um, concepts will go with any disease anytime not just lettuce drop and sclerotinia and the final component of a good um, disease management program for lettuce drop is fungicides. And um, for timeliness and for accuracy, we're just going to put links in the description below. And so um, a good uh, fungicide used preventatively will help protect lettuce um, early on. Um, and that's another way to help prevent, again, that inoculum from building up in the soil and, and to get through that five to seven year. Um, in other videos, we're addressing um, solarization and the uh, attempt at solarizing or decomposing these sclerotia uh, with heat. And those are other videos to come. So a combination of multiple uh, cultural practices and fungicides are gonna be necessary to manage sclerotinia diseases, particularly in today's video, we're talking about lettuce drop. 
but to use more than one um, of those of those um, concepts fungicides alone will not manage it but uh, rotation alone will also not completely manage it unless you're on a seven-year rotation so what we're trying to do is to um, to stack a combination of practices so that growers can get their lettuce in in the spring and so that uh, our growers here in Kentucky have a profitable lettuce harvest each year